everybody. Welcome back to another episode of House of Cards. Whew, it has been a while since I've been here because I was actually on a vacation. Yes, believe it or not, I took a vacation to Hawaii. Uh, that is actually where I was born and grew up. So it was a great trip to go see some family and to uh, connect with some friends out there. It was my birthday also. So I wanted to celebrate that. And um, yeah, so Last week, you might have noticed there wasn't a Mailbag Monday because I was uh, out there. But, of course, I come home to a massive pile of mail <laughs> that I got to get through this this episode. So this might be a little bit longer episode than usual. So if you're into these episodes, then this is this is the one for you. Uh, if you're not, it's going to be really long. So maybe you, you skip, skip through it to things that you like. Anyways, um, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, it'd be awesome if you would. Um, and if you want to get updated every time a new video drops, you can hit the bell icon as well. And if you like the video, you know, shoot me a like. That's awesome too. It gives me a lot of uh, motivation to know what and what you guys don't like. So, anyways, without further ado, we're gonna jump into this Monday mailbag. Yes. Okay. This is a serious one. So. We'll try to keep this under an hour. I don't think I'll go that long, but it's quite a bit to get through. So we'll start off with this month's issue of SMR. So again, this is PSA's uh, monthly magazine they put out. Um, this is the May issue. So got Mr. Uh, Tatis on the cover. You know, he's the darling of the baseball card world right now. I definitely have my uh, handful of Tatis cards and I am actually should be getting those back pretty soon from PSA. Uh, they just finished the final uh, phase of grading. So I'm excited to have those back. Hopefully San Diego keeps playing great and they do a nice playoff run. But um, yeah, like usual, I wanted to kind of go through a couple articles in here with you guys just to show you what I think is cool in this issue. And then uh, we'll move on to the cards. So again, here's the Tatis article, uh, Collecting Fernando. Let's see, just kind of highlight some of his, um, you know, cards that most people know about or don't know about, but, you know, just kind of show some of the basics ones. You know, can, can anyone else chime in on these holiday cards? I don't know, I think they're corny, but to each their own. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, of course, the 16 Bowman Chrome, the first Bowman, obviously a huge one. Um, then, you know, the tops chromes over here, you can see a three different variations. Um, some more stuff here from him, you know, from 19 and 20 finest update, all the usual stuff. And I think there's a couple more. Yeah. Tops dynasty five star. Anyways, you guys get the point. So some pretty cool tattoo stuff. And then the other article I was really interested in here uh, was this PSA registry article on magic. So I actually been collecting magic kind of spotty here and there, but uh, definitely a cool, uh, if you're into uh, the PSA registries, I definitely uh, recommend um, checking this one out. And if you like to collect magic like I do. So anyways, that's it for SMR this month. Um, I did find out you can actually go on the PSA website and read uh, these uh, electronically, digitally, or whatever you wanna call it. So um, you don't have to have the subscription, you can actually go onto the PSA website. So I haven't done it myself yet because I do get the physical ones and I'm old school and I like the, you know, the tangibility, you sit on the patio and, you know, read this with a cup of coffee type vibes, but you know, some people like the digital stuff. So uh, check that out if you haven't yet, so you can uh, read the articles as well. Okay. Now let's start into some of this mail because we got a lot to get through. Okay. Let's start, let's start with the good old white envelopes. Okay. Some letter. I haven't seen this paper in a long time. <laughs> I haven't been in school for a long time. All right, cool. Well, nothing surprising here. Just another, uh, <laughs> just another uh, uh, Jordan. Um, this one looked really good online. Again, you never know until you see it in person, but it seemed like it had the potential to get a good grade. So uh, grabbed up that bad boy for super cheap, like always. And I love it when they mail these cards in the standard white envelope so you don't have to pay an arm and a leg for uh, shipping on those. 
It's nothing more annoying than paying more for shipping than what the card's even worth. All right, get this one off camera. Lots and lots of... Jane, hey. Lots and lots of writing on it. All right. Interesting tape job going on. So yeah, I was in Hawaii and I had a great time, man. It was, um, obviously it's Hawaii, it's hard not to, but um, saw lots of family and I actually got a chance to go stop by a card shop out there, uh, which was fun. Just kind of checking out the local scene and um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a nice experience. I just, you know, quickly got in and got out. I didn't spend too much time uh, in the shop because it was actually a pretty tiny shop. Um, and, it's pretty interesting because they're actually selling uh, CBD products, which if you don't know, that's a cannabis uh, related uh, health product, but it's, uh, and sports cards in the same shop. So I was like, oh, very interesting. So anyways, I got this little, this little five pack here of these Pedri stickers. These are um, his rookie stickers. So uh, I'm gonna have to go through these, see if there's anything worthwhile in here as far as the condition goes. But I thought these were a, a nice little pickup for uh, a, a fair price and be able to, you know, get some of these graded once, you know, grading comes back down to earth. Um, might be nice because I think Pedri's starting to build a really solid fan base right now. And you see some of his um, museum cards, which I might, I, I did purchase one, but his uh, museum, which is his one of his rookie cards um, that just recently came out, he, uh, his cards are going for some pretty solid prices so I think uh, his market is there I think you know his fan base is there he's on a good team um, you know I think he's got a lot of potential to be a, a pretty big uh, rookie uh, uh, speculative rookie of course you never know but yeah anyways just one of those guys where I'm kind of keeping an eye on all right there we go some good cardboard there oh yeah this one I'm actually really excited about so this is from Upper Deck uh, 1993. They did a set um, that uh, was for the uh, soccer team. So the uh, World Cup, you can kind of see it there at the bottom. Hopefully it focuses, but yeah. So, you know, this was for the World Cup. So Upper Deck did a set. And again, this is early Upper Deck. You know, Upper Deck was around in 1989 was their first one. So they ended up doing this honorary captain set and they had different different um, kind of icons from multiple sports kind of paying tribute to soccer. So they had like Joe Montana and they had of course Michael Jordan and, and you know a bunch of others. But anyways, um, the Jordan card is obviously uh, the chase, but this is the parallel, which is the gold, I believe they call it. And um, you can tell because it's borderless and the other, um, the base version has a border. So um, yeah, these cards are pretty cool. I mean, you combine, you know, soccer with, you know, obviously the GOAT. You can get a lot of uh, a lot of love, so yeah, this uh, '94 World Cup upper deck set. I mean, can't go wrong in my opinion. So, pick this up for what I thought was a fair price. You know, this was probably a grading candidate because you know this card grade is worth a lot more than ungraded, but you know, and it's worth it because the the, the value is there. So it's not something you have to really question. I'm not going to send it in on like an express and pay 300 bucks, but. You know, when PSA opens back up and they, you know, open up some of the mid-tier levels, I'll probably end up sending it in one of those. Because that will be great. I can't wait for that day. <laughs> Just like, come on, PSA. All right. I don't know what's going on with this thing. Uh, interesting. This is like, I really call this um, material. I was to use like electric tape. I mean, again, hey, it's safe, I'm happy, but man, painter's tape would have made life easy. Ugh, see, look at that. That's the problem with like these weird tapes is they never peel off clean and you end up struggling. Ugh. Let's see if I can just extract this without spending any more time on the tape. There we go. All right, cool. So, um, you guys will probably remember from other videos, Ryan Garcia is a hot boxer that I've been collecting for a while. And his really only card that has come out so far is this Goodwins Champions. 
Um, but this, so Good Witch Happy is they have interesting parallels and all kinds of crazy stuff. They'll end up making like six different cards and sizes and all kinds of stuff for some of these guys. But this is what they call the lenticular, which is kind of like a 3D sort of, if you remember like back in the days when they would make like a lot of stuff in that kind of weird 3D sort of vibe. <laughs> it's hard, I don't know if it's picking it up on the camera, but. But anyways, remember those things like back in the days where you would like move it and it was like a whole different picture and you move it this way, it's a whole different picture. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that. But yeah, so it's just a, a lenticular version of this. Um, so this is a base, there's a base card like this, but then there's a lenticular, which is a lot more uh, rare. Um, so that's the one I wanted to get because, you know, they don't have too many parallels of these. They do have like autos and stuff, but as far as like, you know, base parallels, there's really just like a couple. So uh, the lenticular I thought was a really cool one. So I grabbed this one. I think Garcia is going to be on a tear here soon. So if he gets another big fight with somebody, he's going to keep building his reputation. All right. Yes. DC sports cards, they're always good to me. So another Durant rookie card, but this one is the glossy. So if you guys are shopping for these cards, um, always look on the back because it'll say glossy. And sometimes it won't say glossy. And sometimes the person listing it doesn't understand like the difference. And you can sometimes find a good deal if they're not paying attention to if it's glossy or not. Because the glossies are uh, obviously more short print than the base paper. So definitely if you have the opportunity to grab glossies, I would definitely do it. But again, it's, you know, it's, it's not any... It's not a uh, bad thing to grab the papers either because either way they're um, they're pretty solid cards but these cards are fairly easy to see like the condition online because it does you know show pretty well when it has any kind of damage but um, definitely check the back because I noticed the back on the top too with the corners because it's white on the front but then it's colored on the back so you can see any damage by looking at the back versus the front because you know it's hard to see like messed up corners when it's white but Anyways, another Durant um, Fleer rookie there. Glossy though, not the regular. All right, what's here? I'm trying to get through this fast for you guys because I don't want this to be a super, super long video. <laughs> oh, there it went. But I definitely want to, you know, spend some time. It's been a while. I missed, I missed making some content while I was gone. I was thinking about doing one in Hawaii, but then I was just like, I didn't have my little setup and you know, I wanted to do like a little card shop tour, but then I was just kind of like, eh, I don't know. I was uh, definitely just kind of relaxing out there. didn't really want to think about much, but you know, thinking about sports cards isn't like hard work or anything. Don't get me wrong. It's definitely the joy I find in many days. All right. So I just love these golds from these 2018 uh, Donruss soccer they're just gorgeous they're numbered out of 75 there's they're still fairly cheap so whenever i see like a player that i know is you know a goat or you know like a hot rookie or something in this specific set i pick it up so i definitely have a few of these i have neymar and i think messi right now in the elite series and so i grabbed this lewandowski just because you know why not it was fairly cheap he's a goat for sure uh he just scored another goal today i think in uh in the in the Bundesliga, so I mean, uh, he's gonna go down as you know one of the greats. I always compare Lewandowski. Like a lot of people are kind of like, well, you know, why doesn't anyone collect him? Like, why isn't is he as you know iconic as some of these other players? Because his stats are, you know, if you look at his stats, like I mean, he's up there. Like I mean, definitely one of the most productive players over the last you know um, decade or since he's been start since he's been playing. But he just hasn't like. Uh, I don't know hasn't gotten the collector's love for some reason so there are some collectors don't get me wrong it's like nobody collects him but you know you don't hear his name tossed around as much as you do with you know obviously Messi Ronaldo and then you know then it goes to Mbappe Holland and then it goes down to like you know Sancho and Mason Greenwood and you know all these other cats Joao Felix and these other guys that are you know younger and just kind of proving themselves but Lewandowski is just kind of sitting there on the sidelines like hey I've been doing this for a long time and I'm one of the greatest so I kind of compare him you know, to like that Tim Duncan, you know, Dirk Nowitzki, if you're looking, you know, comparing basketball and, and soccer, like, because I think it's like those all-time goats that just don't quite have the hobby love, even though everyone knows they're good. 
I kind of see him sort of similar to those kind of guys. But remember when they had that run up in uh, earlier this year where uh, everyone, you know, was scooping up Duncan and Nowitzki and stuff. I think that's something where, you know, maybe uh, Lewandowski will have his moment too where people will start getting excited about his cards. But I've been, uh, I've been a fan and I've been uh, grabbing what I can definitely of his because, man, numbers don't lie, you know. I can't say he didn't hasn't and still is having uh, an amazing career all right so more soccer i know i know guys it's turning into the soccer channel but um you know it's it's kind of where my uh head's at right now as far as the collecting i'm waiting for these other markets to cool off a little bit and soccer even though soccer's super hot i still think there's some uh, gems to be found there um in comparison to you know specifically basketball just because basketball is you know the king of all the cards right now but definitely the most expensive <laughs> but cooling down for sure i've uh I definitely need to start picking up more basketball right now because of the fact that the market's down. And you know what? I don't think that's a bad thing because I think it needed to come down a little bit. It was just too much. There's people paying thousands of dollars for these unproven rookies and I just didn't get it. So I'm, I'm kind of happy when I, you know, really started getting back into this a couple years ago. I didn't go and just like bust into a bunch of, you know, uh, you know prospect rookies like a lot of people did i'm sorry if you did guys but i don't know i was on the on the fence i was just like you know i got the whole zion job you know vibe so i you know i grabbed some of those and stuff of course but you know as far as all the other ones like tyler hero and you know uh, i don't know darius garland and, you know just like random dudes that like haven't really proven anything i was just like eh, i'm okay <laughs> like nah, not, not i'm not gonna go through much money um but speaking of young guys who have proven a lot, uh, Mr. Mbappe here. So this is the museum collection that just came out, the 2020-21. Um, again, gold parallels, gorgeous cards, numbered out of 50. So even though this isn't like an Mbappe rookie year or anything, this is like third year, fourth year technically if you count um, if you count 16, 17 as, as a rookie year. But um, I do think it's um, just a beautiful card. And for Mbappe collectors, you know, I can see people wanting this card. So again, gold numbered superstar player. Can't go wrong in my opinion. All right. Oh, what's next? So many options. Huh, this is a thick one. It might be graded. Let's see. All right, we're good. We're doing good on time. We're only about 17-ish minutes in. Not bad. Wow. What? Is <laughs> just a big bonus pack or something? Uh, <laughs> I've never seen, like, filler cards sent like that before, but hey. Enjoy the free... I don't know. Oh, freebies. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm like free bird, <laughs> Leonard Skinner. Um, yeah, I, I highly doubt there's anything worthwhile. I mean, like how you put the Seattle Sounders um, one on the front there. I don't. I have never. I haven't collected MLS cards because I just. I don't know, guys. And I know there's, you know, there's a few times where you can get prospects in MLS and get, you know, transferred and they end up on a big team and then their MLS cards are worth something. Oh, look at this guy just put a bunch of sounders in there. That's cool. Nice, nice touch there. Whoever this is from, I'll make sure and give him good feedback. <laughs> Jeez, got three Roger. I just think he, you know, was just obviously trying to ponder to the Seattle the Seattle love there but yeah super cool all right uh let's see what we can get this open I'm guessing it's a soccer card since there were soccer fillers all right all right cool All right, so uh, this is kind of a little bit of prospecting on my part, and you know, I think soccer prospecting is not the easiest because unless you watch like tons of soccer, and the problem here in the U.S. is that you know we only get really kind of these cherry-picked games that we get to watch. But you know, I did sign up for uh, you know ESPN Plus, where they do have a lot more uh, soccer on there as well, just to you know make sure I stay up on that uh, stuff. But um, 
And now I'm gonna probably butcher his name because I am definitely uh, not super affluent in uh, <laughs> in Netherland uh, name pronunciations, but I'm gonna say it's uh, Matthias Delit. I don't know. We'll say that. But anyways, uh, I did research him quite a bit on the actual, you know, skill set and how good he is, and he is pretty solid. So. Um, a little prospecting here, but I definitely think um, he's worth watching. So this was um, a card that I thought was a, a good one to pick up. I think, you know, if you're kind of prospecting, you don't want to go spend like a ton on like, you know, uh, auto or something like that or whatever. You know, I think picking up the hollows of the Donruss um, or, you know, lower end kind of prism parallels is a good move. Um, and this auto, I'm sorry, hollow was definitely fair in price. And so I thought this is, would be a good investment, especially if this kid ends up, you know, going nuts. Um, you know, that could be a really good investment. So we shall see. A little bit of prospecting is okay. Just don't like go dump thousands of dollars into unproven players that, you know, may or may not end up becoming anybody. Another, another one on the list. All right, let's see. Interesting here. <laughs> um, they just put raw cards like that. Okay. Well, sounds good. Assuming those cards are not valuable, so that's totally cool. I feel bad if they were valuable. Even though the painter's tape comes right off of the card with no damage. <laughs> Another reason why painter's tape is awesome for mailing cards. Okay. Jeez Louise. Oh yeah. Well, one of my favorite fighters, and I know he's got a big fan base too, is Mr. Nate Diaz. So this is his very first autograph card. I don't know why they sent me a bunch of random baseball cards with it, but his very first autograph card. I know it's a sticker autograph, but it's a clean auto. Look at that, clean. So if you guys don't know, like uh, autos get graded. You don't have to get them graded with PSA. Um, you know, it's optional. I know a lot of people don't like to get them graded with PSA, but I know like Beckett, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they require you to grade the auto if it's an autograph card. So, um, I just picked this up. It's a sticker auto, which I don't love, but it's his first autograph, uh, which is a big deal. And then it is from the 2010 set. So it's a year after his rookie card. So anyways, pretty cool card. Um, yeah, I'm happy to have this in the collection. So I'm gonna take a look at that. Hopefully it's not beat to hell. Uh -huh. Hey look, you threw a Yordan in there. <laughs> it's actually not a terrible card. Joy Votto. Huh. Anyways, sometimes I like to see what they choose for their uh, inserts. Okay, what's next? Let's do this one. We got a couple Com C orders there, and I got something from Tops. Com C is, oh my gosh, man. Some of their orders are taking. I mean, eBay purchases, not like you requested a shipment from the ComC web website, which, you know, you kind of get an idea how long those take when they, you know, allow you to pick shipping and all that stuff. But like, when you buy something on eBay, or you win an auction from ComC on eBay, you kind of expect it to show up, you know, in a decent uh, time frame, you know, because it's just like you would, you know, other people would be held to a certain, you know, handling and processing time and stuff like, I know mine is set to like three days or something like that, right? So by the time you win, I have, you know, three days to ship your card. But like, literally, these cards were like a month before they even shipped them. And I'm like, I wrote to him. I said, you guys, like, what is going on? Like, you just shouldn't be doing auctions if you can't, you know, fulfill it within the time frame. So anyways, my little rant. All right. Another museum gold so this is uh the pedri so this is you know the one i got earlier with the stickers pedri's a young superstar rookie card right there out of 50 so i think this has a lot of potential to be a pretty solid card and this set just came out too like probably within the last um, say less than a month right and good chances to get these cards in good shape you know if you if you 
get cards early, right? They, they come in typically better condition than if you're getting them, you know, two years later and when everything's been picked over, right? Not saying you can't find stuff. You still can. I've gotten plenty of cards, you know, tens of cards that have, you know, from the 90s. But uh, your odds are higher if you jump in sooner. Again, you don't want to jump in too soon because a lot of times you might get burned because of that early, you know, excitement of these are... Uh, you know the new stuff and everyone's excited and they want to go pay top dollar right so don't don't jump in too early don't jump in like the day it releases and start buying stuff you know from breaks right away but maybe wait like two weeks three weeks maybe then start looking because then the prices will cool off a little bit you'll be kind of just you know you're not going to get the very first pickings but again if you're not trying to buy like a really ex exclusive hard to find rare you know card you know again these golds you know why they are numbered out of 50 i mean it's still 50 it's not like impossible to find you know they'll pop up i think i've seen like two or three of those pop up already so again if you're looking for like some like one of one or something then yeah maybe you just buy it as soon as you see it but for the most part if you're buying you know any kind of like gold or something number to five or 50 or more you, you, you could probably wait you don't have to buy you know jump in right away okay this is Specifically the one that I mentioned was taking forever, but this card I have been looking for. I have eBay alert set up. I just love this card and it is hard, hard, hard to find in good condition. And I know this one isn't perfect condition because I know when they listed it on ComC it was not, but it's in pretty good shape. So this is the uh, 90, sorry, I'm tripping, 96 Thunderclap, I believe the 96, yeah. 96 Thunderclap, Griffey. I just think this card is one of the coolest looking cards. <laughs> like I said before, Lightning and Refractor and Foil. I mean, it's just a badass card. And then of course, Griffey, I mean, 96, prime time, prime time Griffey. Uh, got his hat back on backwards, but you can see the chipping on the edges of this card That is where you hit the most trouble, but it is not that bad Like I have seen ones that are pretty beat that you know people are still buying up like crazy and this one's got sharp corners You know, I mean just the ever so slight chipping on the top there I think this might grade an 8 which would be a really high grade for this card because I mean, it is next to impossible to find in a 10 for sure. Um, maybe I'll pull up the pop here real quick just for fun. Uh, we can kind of look at it together here to see kind of how hard these 90s inserts are to get high grades in. So um, I will uh, pull that up here and we can look at it together. Um, let me see here. All right, 90. Let's see here, 96. Pull up my keyboard here. So let's go 1996 Fleer Ultra Ken Griffey Jr. Thunder Clap. All right. Uh huh. Da -da 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 -da. Thunder Clap, Thunder Clap. Where are you? Thunder Clap. Home Run Kings Power Plus Reward Respect. Thunder Clap. There we go. So. This is not the gold medallion edition because that would be crazy. Let's see here. But the basic Thunderclap Griffey. And this is number. Oh. There it is. So this is number 11. Yep, there it is, number 11. King Griffey Jr. I mean, look at this. <laughs> Here's your grades nine, nine graded total. One ten, three nines two eights, two sevens, and one six. So my guess is this will be a, I mean, I would say it's an eight. I think you can get an eight. I haven't looked at the surface yet, but looking at the condition of it, I think it's an eight, which would be huge. So um, yeah, that's why I say this is a, a, a card that doesn't pop up super often. See, there's only nine graded, but I definitely think there's a lot of um, collectors out there who want that card in a high grade. So. Um, I do too, so I might, I mean, this probably is going to end up in my PC, but yeah, super cool card. I'm really happy to have this card, but I think this is uh, going to go down as one of my favorite cards in my PC once I get it done, so very cool. Griffey. All right, let's get some more Com C action here. Finally getting stuff out, which is good. All right. Come on. Open up. Yeah, there's the 
bubble inside the bubble. I actually just sent them, Comsi's having a top loader shortage. And so they asked everyone if they would send them in like, you know, like gently used, nice condition top loaders. So I sent them a 123 of them, I think. And they give you 10 cents back for each one, which is, you know, not bad. Um, so got like 12 something bucks and credit from them, which I thought was pretty cool. So, all right. So. Uh, to finish that thought, if you guys have extra top loaders sitting around, and like I did, I just had a ton because, of course, when I get these cards in, I typically just, you know, throw them in a, a, a fresh top loader each time and don't really mess around with, um, you know, the original top loaders. Just because typically the original top loaders are a little, little you know, scrubby that they're being mailed to you. Unless it's Comsi. Comsi will always send you, like, fresh top loaders, but... Anyways, let's stop talking and start looking at these cards. So I picked up a small lot on ComC that I thought were, you know, pretty cool cards. So I'll start with this one. This is a Cam Newton. This is Select uh, 2014. So this would be his fourth year, but it's a gold, which I thought was interesting. So this is numbered out of 10. See that? Um, I don't know, man. I think Cam, I think I, I, yeah. We'll see, right? Because if New England ends up having a good year and Cam ends up breaking out, I mean, this could be a pretty sweet card. Um, but again, he might have a year like last year. Yeah, this card might not be worth much. But again, I didn't pay a ton for it. So um, I think it's a, it's a cool pickup. Any gold select or gold prisms are always a nice pickup, especially for, you know, well-known players. And I do think Cam is going to get into the hall. I, I just think he's going to be, a, you know, kind of a late, a late uh, arriver, but I think he'll get in eventually. So... Um, yeah, pretty cool card. I picked this up for, I don't know, I'll put it on the screen, but not very much. All right. Wow. No, no top loader or nothing. So this was a Beckham, uh, what was this? 1998 Merlin. So second year Beckham, rookie season 96. So a pretty cool sticker. Uh, just didn't have this one. So I wanted to grab this one as well. I like it when they do these little kind of refractory sort of cracked ice stickers. I think they look really cool, but Manchester United, of course, that was, you know, his famed club that he played with forever. Um, huge, you know, upside, uh, obviously, with the collectability with Beckham. I think it's good. All right, this one I'm really excited about. This uh, Kevin De Bruyne, yeah, this, oh, he's been playing great. And, you know, Man City has been on fire. So I, I think this has tons of upsides as well. So this is the, the tops, you know, Chrome 2017-18, which is first year top chrome and it's the gold which i love as well kevin de bruyne is kind of a you know i don't say up and coming because he's been he's been in the league for a while um i think since 2011 i believe i gotta double check that but he is just killing it right now and just just scoring goals like crazy so this is numbered out of 50 i just love any golds i just think it's a nice collector sort of level card um yeah, and this card just looks great. So I hope the surface is just as good. And this is definitely going to be a grading candidate for me for sure. And then the man here, Mr. Beckham. So this is his... Um, they came out with a set for um, England that was... Um, it's a pretty sought after set it had um you know kind of the whole team right the whole english team and this is kind of its own sort of upper deck you know subset that they came out with um it was 1997 98 so again second year uh, i think this is this might have been his first one in the england kit i'll have to check but hard card to find in good shape there is a parallel of this one as well that says like something lions i forget across the front of it but it's kind of a dumb parallel because they just like print it right across the front of the card and they emboss it on there and so it kind of almost like ruins the look of the card but i mean again people sometimes are just more about the rarity than they are about the visual uh, look of it but this card has gone up quite a bit so i'm glad i grabbed this on com c when i did and this one seems to be in pretty decent shape so um yeah i think this would be a cool one i have a pretty solid beckham collection now so <laughs> who knows i might end up becoming a set registry uh uh, person for Beckham here after it's all said and done all right another calm C let's see oh the double bubble oh all right 
Feels graded. And yes, it is. All right, cool. So this was just a kind of an easy pickup for me um, for the price I paid and for, you know, what the future is of Mr. Mbappe. You know, I paid, you know, you'll see on the screen here, but $132 for a graded 9.5 silver press proof uh, Mbappe 1819 Donruss. So 1819 is not his rookie year, but you many people consider it his second year. Um, again, he had, you know, a, a stint in um, 16, 17, but 17, 18 is kind of when his first like cards came out. So that was like his tops Chrome and, you know, a couple other ones. But his uh, Donruss, you know, first year Donruss card and a lot of his more, you know, uh, like his Prism card obviously came out in 18. That was the year he went to the World Cup. So again, 18 is a pretty significant year for Mbappe, but I grabbed this. I do actually have another press proof at PSA as well. So I just, you know, thought it'd be nice to have another one for a cheap, you know, pretty cheap price, especially, you know, SGC and, you know, again, no love. <laughs> Doesn't get any love in the hobby. So man, if you guys are looking for discount, I'm telling you the move right now, if you're patient, the move right now is buy these SGC and maybe even BGS cards that are nine fives or tens. Um, obviously BGS tens are gonna be more, but like uh, SGC nine fives are a bargain. Even tens are a bargain, but real bargains is nine five. And I mean, I've noticed a lot of the times the nine fives look just as good as PSA 10. So it really just, you know, really just depends. I'm just, you know, quickly scanning this one for any errors. I mean, it looks pretty good. So yeah, I, I think this is a solid card. I think for the price I paid, you know, the fact that it's graded and we all know how hard it is to get graded cards back right now or how expensive it is, you know, even SGC is charging over 30 something bucks, right? Plus shipping, blah, blah. So let's just say, you know, you're in and out there at 40 bucks plus to grade this, I mean, and you know it's a good grade and the card itself is probably, you know, 50, 60 dollar card ballpark. Um, I mean, to me, to me, I think this is a good deal. So anyways, nice little pickup there. Uh, just wanted to grab, I, I like when I see things like that that just seem way too cheap, it's hard to, not grab it because I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, I'll probably turn around and sell that tomorrow for, you know, 50 bucks more than what I paid for it. All right, and this is the final one. So we got this done in decent time. Not too bad. And this is from Tops. So I know what this is already when I'm excited to have this because there you go. The Trevor Lawrence top set so you know what I might do I'm probably gonna do a separate video just kind of you know doing a reveal of this and opening it up but these sold out really quick um, these are not licensed by the NFL because tops obviously doesn't have the NFL license Panini does but it is um, you know Trevor Lawrence's you know license I guess you call it his personal license so there is uh, definitely a cool uh, you know uh, interesting kind of design and stuff with these cards even though he doesn't have like his jersey on or has like the team or anything like that i think you know the fact that these are super early trevor lawrence cards and they were designed i believe by him as well um not by him only but i think you know him and his team you know help design some of these so there's 25 cards total um and then um uh, so Trevor Lawrence cards featuring iconic tops football designs and then 20 cards featuring artwork by husband and wife art uh, artist duo Brooke and Chase Lawrence. So I think that's his family that helped him. So and there's also autographs in here too, which would be crazy to get one. But anyways, we'll crack this open on another uh, video just because I want to, you know, kind of take some time with this set and kind of talk about it a little bit. But yeah, pretty cool. All right. Whew. Look at that. Under 40 minutes. What an accomplishment. 10 days worth of mail in under 40 minutes. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Like always, I really do appreciate it. I've been seeing the the uh, subscriber count, you know, creep up slowly. And 
I definitely, uh, you know, hope that you guys find value and interest in entertainment in these videos a little bit. Uh, I'll be doing a lot more here soon. I'm going to be, you know, collaborating with some other people on the YouTube world and, you know, just kind of starting to spread my wings a little bit more. I'm actually showing at a card show here in the next couple weeks, which I'm excited about. So I'll probably get some cool video footage from me um, actually having a table at a card show um, and some other stuff coming up too. So stay tuned. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, I highly recommend recommend it um, and if you uh, want to get notified just hit the bell icon and if you enjoyed this video and you made it all the way through this 40 minutes of marathon uh, mail day openings here um, thank you first of all and secondly um, if you liked it hit the like button all right guys well that is all for now I am going to now pick up all this trash everywhere and we will uh, be back on another episode soon and until then peace